Good day, sweeties! For today's video, we're going to talk about measures of central location for group data. Aside from the measure of central tendency or the mean, median, and mode, central location measures are the other ways to describe the data. The concept of these measures is related to the median, which divides the set of data into equal parts. So these values are called fractiles such as quartile, deciles, and percentiles. So first, let's talk about quartile. Quartile are the score points which divide a distribution into four equal parts. So quartile came from the word quartz which means four. And the following is used when finding the quarters for group data. So here is the formula for quartile. So as we can see, we have QK is equal to LB plus N all over 4 minus less than CFP all over FK multiply it by CI. Where in our LB, it is the lower class boundary of the median class. Our FK, it is the frequency of the quartile class. The less than CFP, it is the less than cumulative frequency of the class before the quartile class and then the CI it is the class interval and our N it is the total frequency so here is the formula in finding the QK class so QK class is equal to K multiplied by N divided by 4 wherein our N it is the total frequency and K it is the N quartile where N is equal to 1 2 and 3 so this is the first step in computing the quartile so that we know where is the position of our quartile in our less than cumulative frequency. So doon lang natin titingnan yung nakuha natin na QK class. So to apply our formula, we're going to calculate Q1 of the 50 students in mathematics examination. So we have here the scores and their frequency. So the first step is we're going to determine the lower boundaries of the given data. So to solve for the lower boundary, we need to subtract 0.5, the smallest number per class interval. So as we can see here, we have here the lower limit from the left side of these scores and the right side of this score is the upper limit so we're going to subtract 21 minus 0 0.5 we get 20.5 next is 26 minus 0 0.5 we get 25.5 and then 30.5, 35.5, 40.5 until 45.5. Next step is we're going to determine the cumulative frequency. So in determining the cumulative frequency, we're going to start in the first frequency which is the 6 and then we will proceed into successive adding. So let's start with 6 plus 12, we get 18, 18 plus 9, we get 27, 27 plus 11, we get 38, 38 plus 8, we get 46, 46 plus 4, we get 15. So as we can observe, our last cumulative frequency is equal to the total population. Next step is we need to calculate the Q1 or the quartile 1 class. So use the formula of QK class which is K all over N divided by 4. Wherein our K or yung pinapakumpit sa ating K is 1. And our N is equal to 50 which is the total population of our given data. So we have Q1 is equal to 1 times 50 divided by 4. So 1 times 50 is equal to 50 divided by 4 we get 12.5. So therefore we need to find the class interval where the 12.5 score is contained. At kukunin natin yun sa row ng cumulative frequency. So next step is we're going to locate the class interval where Q1 is located. As we saw, the Q1 is equal to 12.5. So in this table, we're going to find where is 12.5 on the column of less than cumulative frequency. So in this regard, muna natin yung column dito sa my scores. Okay, so in less than cumulative frequency, the 12.5 will fall on 18. 
So, hindi siya pwede dito sa 6 since mas maliit kasi yung 6 kaysa sa 12.5. Hindi rin pwede dito sa 27 since meron pang 18 na mas malapit sa 12.5. So, therefore, the quartal 1 is class interval of 26. So, you're going to get all the data on the class interval 26 to 30. We get the frequency which is equal to which is 12. The lower boundary, the 25.5. And the less than cumulative frequency is 6. Yung mas mababa doon sa na compute natin na cumulative frequency. Therefore, the quartal 1 is located in the class interval 26 to 30. And now, we will be getting all the values in the row 26 to 30. So, we have frequency 12, the lower boundary 25.5, and the less than cumulative frequency is 6. Yung mas mababa ngayon sa 18. Next is... We're going to solve quartal 1 using the formula. So now we're going to substitute all the given values here in this formula. So we have 25.5 plus 50 divided by 4 minus our less than CFT is 6. So next is we're going to apply PANDAS rule. So we need to solve first 50 divided by 4. We get 12.5. Then we will subtract 6. 12.5 minus 6, we get 6.5. And then we're going to divide it into 12. So we have 0 0.5417. Then next is we're going to multiply it by 5. We get 2.71. Then we're going to add 25.5. Then we get 28.21. So therefore, the 25% or the quartal 1 of the students have a less than or equal to 28.21. So how do I get 25%? Because if we're going to divide the quartal into 4 equal parts, the quartal 1 would be 25, the quartal 2 would be 50, and the quartal 3 will be 75. Next is the decils. So decils are those values that divide the total frequency into 10 equal parts. So decils came from the word deca which means 10. So the following is used when finding the decils for group data. So here is also the formula in computing decils. As we can observe, it is also similar on the formula of quartals. They just differ on the meter is 4 because it divides the distribution into 4 equal parts. And the decil here is 10 because it divides the distribution into 10 equal parts. So, we're... As we can observe, we have LB here. It stands for the lower class boundary. We also have FK, the frequency. We have also the less than CFP or the less than cumulative frequency. Our CI, it is our class interval. And also our N, it is the total frequency. So next is, here's the formula in finding the DK class. So where is, uh, we're in, we're going to compute where is the position of our DASA. So we have DK class is equal to K multiplied by N divided by 10. We're in, our N it is the total frequency, K is the N DASA. We're in 1, we're in our N is equal to 1, 2, 3, until 9. So this Decil 1, decil 2, decil 3, and to decil 9, it is also equivalent to decil 1 would be 10%, decil 2 would be 20%, decil 3 would be 30%, and so on. So using also the problem that was given in quartal, we're going to calculate the B7 or the 7th decil of the 50 students in mathematics examination. So in this problem, first we're going to compute the lower boundary and also determine the cumulative frequency. So in determining the cumulative frequency, it is also the same in our quartile in the form and the example in quartal. So let's start first in the first frequency which is 6 and then proceed into successive adding. So we have 6 plus 12, we get 18, 27, 38, 46 until 50 until we've arrived on the total population. The next one is we're going to calculate the 7th class, the position of our 7th decile. So we have now DK class is equal to 
k divided by 10 wherein our k that would be 7 our n is equal to 50 so we have now 7 multiplied by 50 we get 350 divided by 10 we get 35 so therefore we need to find the class interval where the 35th score is contained which we can see in the column of our less than cumulative now we will be locating the class interval where d7 is located which is our computed d7 a while ago is the 35th so in this table the 35th will fall on the row of less than cumulative frequency which is equal to 38 so now it is located in the class interval 36 to 40 next is we will be getting all the values in this row so we have now uh, frequency 11 the lower boundary 35.5 our less than cumulative frequency or you must mababa ngayon sa 38i 27 so using those values we're going to solve the we're going to solve the seventh decimal using that formula and substitute all those given values in this formula so we have now 35.5 plus 7 multiplied by 50 divided by 10 minus 27 divided by 11 multiplied by 5. So using the PEMDAS rule, just like in the quartile, so we have, we will be computing 7 times 50 divided by 10 So we will be computing 7 times 50, we get 350 divided by 10, we get 35, minus 27, we get 8. And now we're going to divide it into 11 before multiplying it into 5. So 8 divided by 11, we get 0 0.73, then multiply it by 5, we get 3.64. So this 3.64, we're going to add it into 35.5 and then we get 39.14 so therefore the 70 percent or the d7 or the seventh decile of the student have a less than or equal to 39.14 so next is percentiles so percentiles are those values that divide the total frequency into 100 equal parts so the following is used when finding the percentiles for group data so here is also the formula in percentile. So as we can observe, it is also the same as the quartile and decile formula. So they just differ on their denominator. So we're in, we also have here the lower boundary, the frequency, the less than cumulative frequency, the class interval, and also the total frequency. So next is, this is the formula in finding the PK class, wherein we have K multiplied by N divided by 100. Wherein our N, it is the total frequency, and K, it is the N quartile, where N, that would be 1, 2, 3, and so on. Wherein, if we're going to convert it into percent, our 1 would be 1%, 2 would be 2%, 3 would be 3%, and so on. So using also the the problem in our quartal and that's how we're going to calculate the 75th percentile of the 50 students in mathematics examination. Here's also the scores and their frequency. So next is we're going to compute the lower boundary and the cumulative frequency. Just, just like in quartals, and decimals, we're going to start here in the first frequency, then proceed to successive addition. So we have 6, 18, 27, 38, 46, until 50. The next one is we're going to calculate the 75th class. So in the formula in computing the PK class is equal to K multiplied by N divided by 100. So we're in our K that would be 75, then we're going to multiply it by 50, then divide it into 100 and we get 37.5. So therefore, we need to find the class interval where the 37.5 score is contained. So next one is in this table, we're going to locate the class interval where 75th is located. 
or the 37 7.5 so in this table we can find it in the or in the column of less than cumulative frequency which is also equal into 38 so we go it is located also in the class interval 36 to 40 next one is we're going to get all the values here in this row so we have frequency 11 we have also lower boundary 35.5 and the less than cumulative frequency or you must mababa ngayon sa 38 i 27 so using those values we're going to substitute it in this formula so we have now 35.5 plus 75 multiplied by 50 divided by 100 minus 27 divided by 11 multiply it by 5 so using also the PEMDAS rule we're going to multiply for 75 multiplied by 50 so we get 3750 divided by 100 so we get 37.5 minus 27 we get 10.5 the next is in this 10.5 we're going to divide it into 11 so we get 0 0.95 multiplied by 5 we get 4.77 plus 35.5 we get 40.27 so therefore the 75th percentile or the p75 of the students have a less than or equal to 40.27 so you must remember that the quartals are the three values in the distribution that divide the data into four equal parts. So we have the quartal 1, quartal 2, and quartal 3. And if we're going to convert it into percent, we have quartal 1 for 25%, quartal 2 for 50%, quartal 3 would be 75%. So the decimals are the nine values in the distribution to divide the data into 10 equal parts. So we have D1 for 10%, D2 20%, D3 30%, D4 40%, D5 50%, which is also equivalent in the quartal 2. D6 would be 60%, D7 would be 70%, D8 would be 80%, D9 would be 90%. So, and also the percentiles are the values in the distribution that divide the data into 100 equal parts. So, we have P1, 1%, P2, 2%, and so on. So, that's all, sweeties. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.